Hey guys, Chris Harry with you on the Backstage Chargers podcast presented by Toyota. We have a very special draft episode coming up. You're going to hear from each of the Chargers' first three selections in the 2019 NFL Draft. Safety Nazir Adderley and offensive tackle Trey Pipkins will join me a bit later. But first up is the team's first round pick out of Notre Dame, defensive tackle Jerry Tillery. Welcome into the Backstage Chargers podcast presented by Toyota. Here with the newest Charger, Jerry Tillery, straight from Hawaii. Jerry, what's up, man? Welcome to the Chargers. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. Tell me about this draft party, first off. Uh, how did it come to be in Hawaii? And just take me through the whole process of Thursday night. Uh, so, you know, I, I love Hawaii. I've been there a bunch of times. And, uh, you know, it's a great place to relax and uh, celebrate any occasion. And so I, I decided I wanted to do my draft party in Hawaii. So you so, had to sit from for a while. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so the uh, the Four Seasons in Maui called, and they wanted to work with me. And so uh, so we so you know we were able to bring my family out and uh, celebrate the big day in paradise. Oh, shit. And, uh, it looked know, great. Yeah, yeah. We got the call, you know, in uh, you know early afternoon in Hawaii, and. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, we celebrated and, you know, I was on a plane the night, that night and here I am in L.A. this morning. So what was the buildup like? Because I was at the Chargers draft party, Santa Monica. It was wild. Mm-hmm. When, they, when they said Jerry Tiller, the place went nuts. But I imagine for you, this thing is like three and a half, four hours long. Yeah. And you were waiting and waiting and waiting for your name to be called. Um, what was the process leading up to that? Like just being around your, your friends and family, just waiting for that phone to ring. Oh, it was just excitement, a little bit of nervousness, uh, uh, you know, toward, towards the end of it. But, uh, you know, I, I was just happy to be there. You know, I'm, I'm blessed to, you know, be in this position to uh, get to play the game I love as a professional. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to get to work. What did Tom Telesco say to you when he made the phone call? Oh, <laughs> so, do you even remember? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was uh, it was, it was kind of a blur. You know, I'm gonna have to you know check the uh, you know check the the, the, the check the tape of it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but you know, it was just the fact that that you know I got the phone call was was really special. You know, what's wild is on I think it was in February. I had Isaac Rochelle, your Notre Dame teammate, on the podcast, mm-hmm. and I said, "Listen, man, I I'm seeing all these mock drafts." And I'm seeing a former teammate of yours mock to the Chargers and, and a bunch of different mocks. And this was like a day or two before the combine, mm-hmm. I believe, or a few days before the combine. Okay. He goes, yeah, Jerry's my dude. I just talked to Jerry yesterday about the combine. And I asked him, I'm like, hey, man, you keep getting mocked. Is, is there anything? Is there anything to it? And you and I both know that these are all kind of manufactured right, things. Right. But the fact that you were mocked and Isaac and I talked about it, and Isaac was talking about it in the present tense, like, uh-huh. Listen, Jerry's going to be a great person in the locker room, and first and foremost, he's just a phenomenal player. So to see it come to fruition, yeah. man, it's got to be kind of surreal for you to be reunited. No, it definitely is. You know, Isaac was a you know big resource and uh, for me at Notre Dame when I got there, and in terms of uh, you know helping me you know understand understand you know how to how to how to play and uh, what to do, and um, you know and uh, I think he'll be a, a huge resource for me. You know, uh, as as a pro, and uh, you know, in terms of uh, you know the challenges that that presents, so uh, you know, I'm excited to uh, to get to work with Isaac again. You know, and also the rest of my uh, you know, the Charger family. Yeah, tell Chargers fans what they can expect from you on the field. Just a little bit about you at Notre Dame and just your production there in general. Yeah, so you know, I'm I'm, a, I'm someone who uh, who's really you know ascending as a player each year. You know, I've gotten better. And so I think, you know, that trend, you know, the trend with me is definitely up. You know, I use my, you know, size and my, my, my skills and athleticism to, uh, you know, uh, rush a passer and stop the run. And, you know, that makes a good D lineman if you can do both of those things. That's helpful. So, so, uh, so, uh, so, yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm excited to, to play, to play in that, that, uh, that, that blue uniform is going to be great. Yeah, those powder blues. Yeah, I heard yeah. you say you look good in powder blue, right? Yeah, yeah, I think I do. I think I look good <laughs> in powder blue. So You're also going to look good in between Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram. When you have a pass rush like that, Jerry, um, how much easier does it make your job and vice versa, just knowing that you have guys that can get to the passer um, really every single down? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, you know, no one they can't, you know, double double all of us, you know, every 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 snap. So someone's gonna get the someone's gonna get a good look and uh then we'll then then we make a lot of plays. 
So I think that's kind of how it's going to go, and I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited to be a part of it. What do you know about this team? I mean, uh, this is going to be year three mm-hmm. under Anthony Lynn, and like you said about your play, this team has been ascending, right? Mm-hmm. You go nine and seven one year. You go 12 and four last year. You win a playoff game. They've added key pieces, especially through the draft when you talk mm-hmm. about Derwin James, the first rounder last year. Um, what do you know about this team and just, just from afar, watching them in the playoffs, watching them throughout the season? Just like you said, you know, the, I've, I've, I've seen this team grow and, and change and, and, get, and get better. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, I think we're close. We're close in L.A., you know, missing, you know, a few small pieces. And I think, I think I'm someone who can really feel that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, take us to the next level for sure. And uh, you know, I think we can win a lot of games together. And, you know, the Super Bowl is the goal. I've, I've seen teammates already reach out, right? Yeah. Both Melvins. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Melvin Ingram, I think, said, let's go get the Super Bowl. I think Melvin Gordon was, was talking about your glasses. <laughs> I liked them, though. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Come on. You know, those, 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 are, those are nice those, glasses. Those were nice glasses, yeah. bro. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Off the field, man, you have a lot of different interests. Um, you speak Japanese. Mm-hmm. You've been to a bunch of different countries. Mm-hmm. Discuss with Chargers fans what you're like off the field. Yeah, I mean, you know, I like to I like to experience new things. I think that helps you as a person, and, uh, and definitely, you know, as a player, you know, you know, being, you know, I guess thrust into a new locker room, being able to navigate that, that definitely helps. Yeah, you know, I having, you know, seeing and understanding a bunch of different different things in, in the world, and uh, you know, I like to read. I like to chill. You know, like watch TV. Uh, what kind of books? What kind of books you read? So magazines usually. I like the New Yorker, the Economist. These are all you know magazines. I, I, I Economist. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's your major, magazine. right? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, you know, that's uh, you know all things I like to read. You know, last I like to read a lot of fiction, the like classic novels. So that's great. Well, you said you've been to a bunch of different countries. What's mm-hmm. your uh, what was your favorite country to Japan, visit? Japan, for sure. No doubt, number one. Number one. Yeah, food. power ranking. Give me like a power ranking. So like, like Japan will be number one. I'll go. Um, I'll go, I'll go France, number two. Okay, uh, strong number two. South Africa, number three. There you go. Yeah. What do you got planned this offseason? Do you have anything planned in between, obviously, all the responsibilities that come with being a, an L.A. Charger now, but do you have, any, you have any plans throughout the season? No, nothing yet. You know, I'm, I'm ready to – I just want to, you know, get better as a, as a player and, uh, you know, help my team win for sure. What advice have you gotten from guys like Isaac, guys who uh, are recently – NFL players over the last couple of years about just coming in in the transition from being a college player to being a pro player because it's a whole different ball game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, you know some of the best advice I've gotten was to you know approach your work like you're the, you know the worst player in the locker room and like you got to prove something every day and uh, if you if you work like that you know you're it's, it's gonna it's gonna look right on the field. Yeah, and so uh, you know that's kind of the you know I guess the humble mindset I'm taking into my work and I'm, I'm ready to get started i'm sure it's like a cross between that mentality but hey I, i'm no man on the totem pole but also having that confidence definitely because you have to have the confidence coming in here you know, you know 2018 sure. all-american yeah. as sports illustrated all-american uh you probably bring that swag to the locker room as well mm-hmm. yeah i mean that's something i've always had that's something i play with on the field but you know it's, it's different i feel like it's going it's different in this league and you know if you gotta if you gotta if you want to be the best you gotta you gotta work work and show it Jerry, the the last few months, take us inside just what the process was like from being done at Notre Dame to training for the combine to training for your pro day, all the interviews, all the visits. I mean, I have to imagine that that's a, a pretty stressful process um, leading up to what really is a dream for you guys. No, it is. But uh, it's it's kind of all <clears throat> it's kind of all in segments, really. Like there's the pre combine training that you do. That's that's really important. You know, uh, after after your last high uh, college game, and then you you you're working for the combine, you perform at combine, and then after that, you know, you're just back to training. I was I was rehabbing, and um, you're training, rehabbing, and then you have to go on all your like top thirty visits. Yeah, and uh, so that's a lot of traveling and uh, moving around. And so that's like a, a different different phase of the whole process. Yeah, and then you know, there's about a week there where you can uh, just you know. Look, look forward to the to the actual draft, and then you know the draft happens yesterday for me, and um, and you know now 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 you're you're to work. Yeah, the day of like you didn't you had no idea. No, what team was going to select no. you if you're no going to be selected idea. in the first round? Did so, you have you had any inkling of like what to expect? Yeah, so you know you I ha- you have an agent who kind of you know communicates with all the teams, keeps you in the loop a little keeps bit, keeps you in the loop a little bit, but you know even he doesn't you know have all the answers. 
So uh, you know, there was a, there was definitely some unknown there, mm-hmm. but uh, but you know, we it, it definitely worked out for us in the end. Your college head coach Brian Kelly, uh, what's the biggest piece of advice or just something that that resonated with you at Notre Dame that you're going to carry on to the pros? Uh, you know, just the way you treat people. You know, the way you approach your work. Uh, you know, you got to professionalize everything you do, and uh, you know, treat people with respect, and uh, and uh, that's how you kind of navigate a, a pro setting. Yeah. Final thing for you, let Chargers fans know what to expect from Jerry Tillery, not only in 2019, but for the long haul here in Los Angeles. Bolt up, baby. We're about to, we're about to win it all. We were close to that Super Bowl. That, that's the goal. And now we're about to do it. That's right. You get in the lingo, right? Bolt up. Yeah. ASAP. Yeah. You know ASAP? No, what's that one? ASAP. Any squad, any place. Okay. All, all right. right. That's that's a big one. All right. Well, I Mel- got that. ASAP, baby. Yeah, ASAP. Melvin Ingram will teach you that, I'm okay. sure, very quickly. Perfect. So, Jerry Tillery, the newest charger, man. Congratulations. Thank I know it's going to be so a much. crazy busy day for you, but we could be more thrilled to have you. Thank you so much. All right, guys. With the newest member of the Chargers, newest member of the Jack Boys. Nazir Adderley, what's up, Nas? How are you? I'm great, man. I'm very excited to be here and just extremely blessed. Listen, it's very rare to talk to somebody just a few hours after like a big dream comes true. Just describe the last 24 hours, man. I mean, it's it's surreal. I mean, it's really like unbelievable, and then it's just an incredible feeling. I mean, just this something you work towards like all my life once I started picking up a football it's something I dreamed about and like that day was yesterday and then I mean it's just very exciting just being a part of a great organization that has a lot of good things going for them and then great coaching staff good yeah. group of guys to play with so I mean it's I couldn't imagine it being any uh, any better situation for me. I've, I've talked to guys over the last couple of years about how the draft is like, it's just super stressful until it's not, until you finally get that call, you finally get selected. Take me through yesterday when you got the phone call from Tom. Was it Tom that called you? Yes, sir. What was that like? Yeah, so, I mean, well, just going back to like what you said about the draft process and it being stressful, I mean, I just try to stay optimistic about everything. You got to. It's made positive because, like, at the end of the day, God gonna put you exactly where he want wants you to be. And so that's my whole mindset. So I mean I was real calm and relaxed and not really stressing. And then uh then I saw like out like cause in the back of my mind I was always hoping, like following the visit, that the Chargers would be the team that that would draft me. Sure. And I saw them coming up on the clock and then um I <laughs> hear my phone buzzing and then I saw the Santa Ana uh, California under the uh, like the area code. You knew good things are and coming. And I was like, oh my god! And I broke down right away. I was just like, like I like we really made it happen. And I know like it's a perfect fit. And I'm just, I just can't even believe it. It's amazing. Well, we'll get into your new teammates and just the defense in general. But just this draft process, going from from a small school in Delaware, just being versatile durable guy and then going to the senior bowl doing your thing what was the the draft process like senior bowl and combine yeah so i mean i'm very blessed to have the opportunity to go to the senior bowl and and get invited to the combine but my my draft process didn't necessarily go as i planned in terms of because like you said i mean i was a durable guy like i started all 45 games in my college career and then i had a high ankle sprain that was a pretty nag it was like great there high ankle sprain i played on from like week five to the end of the season and it continued to bother me um, even into into the senior bowl and the combine. But the senior bowl, I just fought through it because I knew coming from a small school how important it was. So I just fought through it and then I had a pretty good week but in terms of my recovery and set me back. So that's why I was unable to do uh, the stuff at the combine. So I mean, it was, it was pretty frustrating as you can imagine. I mean, because then personally, like, testing has always been one of my strongest sure. attributes, and I haven't didn't really get to show what I can do. Uh, but I mean, at the end of the day, I know everything happens for a reason. And then, like, come my pro day, like, my ankle was finally healthy after five months. And then, probably because I didn't really run full speed yeah. in five months, it's just that's tough what, luck, what happened you know? in my hamstring. But fortunately, it was a mild strain. Like, I went to Indianapolis for a uh, combine recheck, and they got very positive reports, and then, like, I'm fully healthy now, so it's perfect timing. That's great. Well, guys, you know what's funny about the Senior Bowl is that the Raiders were coaching it, and they were slapping a Raiders <laughs> logos. They, I think they put, like, three Raiders no, logos on you. <laughs> now they got to see you twice, Nas. Yes, yeah, sir. They do. <laughs> they definitely do. You said, I, I read one of your role models, uh, Earl Thomas. The fact that you get to learn from Gus Bradley, who's one of the architects of that Legion of Boom, that defense, I mean, what an opportunity. Oh, my gosh. Like, 
It's just gotta even, be surreal for you to, to know that, that was, that's a role model, and then you're gonna follow in those footsteps. Exactly. Like I mean, just the scheme and just the the plan that uh, they had for me. It just like it just screams like my personality, my my um, where I should be on the football field and stuff like that. And then like like I said, coming out of that visit, I was like, yo, that would really be like a perfect fit for me. And yeah. then. I mean, just Coach Gus. I mean, he's he's just great. Like I, I was really blown away just even by my meeting with him. I mean, we probably we probably talked football for like two minutes, but like I came out of it. You talk about like, life. Yeah, we was talking about life. I came out with, of it with a whole bunch of life lessons, and then I was, I came out of me and like I would love to play for that guy. So and I mean that's that's the type of reaction I got meeting with all the different coaches, and then that's how I was like, this <laughs> I, I want to make sense. sure this this going to happen. Yeah, you know. There's a saying around here, and I'm sure a lot of different programs, a lot of different franchises, the the rush and cover, they work together. When you got guys like Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram up front, we just saw Big Jerry come in in the mix, Uchenna Nuosu from USC, uh, another pass rusher, that just makes the back end that much better. You, you're going to be coming into a situation where you know you got some guys that can pressure the quarterback. Yes, sir. I mean, that's music to my ears. I mean, I know the back end and the pass row, they work hand in hand. So, I mean, just having that type of level of players up front, I mean, it just makes my job a lot easier. Yeah. And, and then you talk about the back end, the Jack boys. Derwin James, uh, all pro, pro bowl of his first year. Daniel Jeremiah tweeted this this morning, the NFL Network draft analyst and, and uh, our analyst for Chargers Radio. He said, if you were to go into a lab – Nazir Adderley would be the perfect complement to Derwin James. Just playing with Derwin in his second year, what's that going to be like, man? Oh, that's going to be incredible. I mean, that's all I'm hearing, like, recently, how great of a duo we're going to be. And then, I mean, he's someone I watched even from high school, and I got a lot of respect for his game. And then just playing alongside him is really going to be a blessing, and I can't wait to learn from him. Yeah, and it's not just him, right? It's, you know, we talk about Casey Hayward. Before this year, he was one of the leaders in interceptions. Just guys can get the ball. Desmond King's got a nose for the football. You know, Darwin, yourself, uh, the fact that you have guys that are all versatile. You play corner, you play safety. You could do a lot of different things back there. But I talked to your coach, your college coach this morning, (laughs) Coach Rocco, and he said it's not about third down. It's about getting the ball, and you're one of the best at getting it. No, nah, I mean, that that means a lot. I mean, that's something I always take pride in. Like, if that ball's in the air, like, I, I want to treat it as if I'm a receiver. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, every time that ball in the air, I'm looking to get a turnover because I know how big of an impact and role it plays in the game. Yeah, so I did talk to Coach Rock, but like I said, he said to tell you that he's super proud of you and he's excited for you and, and that just Delaware's behind you, the Blue Hen family, <laughs> they're behind you. What was it like at Delaware, man? And how did it shape you into the man you are today? I mean, I like, like, all right. So I'll just go even go back to high school. Yeah. Um. So that process didn't necessarily go how I anticipated it to either. I mean, I struggled academically freshman sophomore year, leading me to um, have FBS schools come in to talk to me, but say they can't because of my academic situation. Then um, I turned it around, got on honor roll in like Delaware, um, because we actually had a new coaching staff. Um. And Brian Gannis, who recruited me, and then, like, Coach Dave Brock, who's now with the Falcons. Uh, and Coach Rocco came from Richmond, right? Yeah, so that came my junior year. But, I mean, they they was always there for me from the from the jump. I mean, Delaware, just the coaches beforehand was. And, like, they just showed – it was just genuine. Like, it, you could tell it was genuine. And then, like, I, like, looking back on it, I would not change a thing. Like, I would go to Delaware 10 times out of 10. I mean – just on the field, I mean, I feel like I got the best of both worlds because, like, with my coaching staff, because, like, I had um, – I was fortunate to have the defensive coordinator as my position coach when I made the move to safety and mm-hmm. the new coaching staff came in. So then, like, I understood the whole defense, like, de- defensive line fronts and the linebackers, where they're fitting that and, like, where the holes in the defense are. And it just made me a much better football player. But, like, at Delaware, I was placed everywhere. Like, I played – Boundary corner my freshman year, field corner my sophomore year, and a little bit of nickel. Then junior year, started at free safety, played play nickel. And for and my senior year, I started at free safety. I mean, I just stayed at free safety because they like my range over the top. Yeah. But, I mean, it was, just, it was just a great experience. I met a whole lot of great people. The coaching staff is just 
was unreal. Just like I like I really enjoyed both of the staffs that that came in there. And then I mean I know Delaware is behind me, and just the amount of love and support they've given me, I mean it's meant the world to me. You you go from being a blue hand to the powder blues here yes, sir. with the Chargers, man. Uh, what do you want Chargers fans to know about you? Do you have a message for them? As you, I know it's time to get to work now, uh, but LA's new to you, and uh, I know Chargers fans are excited to see you. Yeah, so, I mean, I just want to let Chargers fans know that I'm going to come in. Like you said, it's, it's time to work. I mean, I'm extremely grateful and appreciative of this opportunity. But at the same time, it's just the beginning. So I want to come in right away and learn from these guys. I'm going to come in and be a leader on and off the field. And I'm going to be somebody that's going to treat it like a professor, profession. And, like, I won't, be a, I won't be a problem off the field. I won't be... I won't be a distraction. I just want to come in right away. I love the game of football, and then I'm going to make sure we can get to that Super Bowl. And I know from afar you've probably seen that a culture is being built here with Anthony Lynn. You go 9-7 and seven one year. You go 12-4 and four last year. You win a playoff game. Big things are expected in 2019, but it's all about the hard work that, that goes on inside that locker room and, and just being kind of selfless, right? Yeah, I mean, anything worthwhile doesn't come without hard work. So, I mean, that's something I take pride in, my work ethic, and – that's something like just hearing about the guys on this team. I mean, I know they do as well, and it's like you see the results. So, I mean, I'm going to just come in right away, and then I'm just very eager to learn from everyone. You got to be exhausted, but we're, we're thrilled to have you in Los Angeles, man. Uh, I appreciate you spending some time with us. We'll see you here in a couple of days. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. You got it, man. All right, guys, with the Chargers third round pick, Offensive tackle, Trey Pipkins. Yes, Trey, man. welcome to Los Angeles, man. How are you? I'm excited to be here. <laughs> I just looked this up. Mm -hmm. 35 years ago, Sioux Falls had a player that was drafted. Yeah, Pump you're the Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> you were, you're the first player in 35 years, man. How, how does that feel? Uh, unbelievable, honestly. Like this, That program's a great program, and for me to uh, be able to help kind of put them on the map is, is a real honor for me. I just talked to Nas. It. I talked to Coach Rock. I also talked to your coach this morning. Okay. <laughs> I talked to Coach Anderson. Yep. He was over the moon. He said yeah. he was at an event last night with his wife. Uh, I think it was at a boys and girls club, okay. and he he got the word. He said it was a little bit of ruckus <laughs> in the back, but yeah. but he couldn't be more happy. He said to say that Koo Falls. Yep. Koo right? Falls. Yep. He said Koo yep. Falls is behind the Chargers. Oh, yeah. He said he's proud of you. Mm -hmm. He said he knows that you're going to take the full advantage of this opportunity. Absolutely. Absolutely. There. They, uh, there's been – my phone's been blowing up from tweets and messages and all types of stuff from the guys back home. First thing he said, though, stuff. he said, he said, you get a mic in front of Trey, he's going to light up the room. <laughs> so I, I got, I got oh, high expectations that's, that's for big, this interview, man. big expectations. <laughs> I don't know about all that. All right, but. I'm not even going to go football because I, I saw you coming down – the escalator LAX were yep. you wearing a Ben Wallace Virginia oh, yeah. Union oh, throwback yeah. absolutely how did that come to be and where can I get so one that was that was a gift from my mom because I'm from Virginia that, yeah, okay yeah. okay that was a gift from my mom um I, I kind of have a little jersey collection okay I have a list of like 95 jerseys that I still want on my phone I have probably 20 I think I have 26 right now all right um, what's the next one what's the next one? Oh, I don't know probably <clears throat> Randall Cunningham is I think the next on the list okay um but yeah there's there's a bunch of jerseys I've got I got into jerseys because I really like shoes, so I'd have a shoe problem, but I have too big of feet, so they don't make them in my size very much. So I got into jerseys because I get them in my size. I was sitting with Jason so, Levine, our head of production, yeah. and we both were like, wait, what jersey is that? And we looked it up, <laughs> uh -huh. I was like, that's Ben Wallace? Yeah, yeah. What? And ben Wallace was like one of my favorites. I used to rock the fro in middle school and like all the way through high school. He was a beast, man. Yeah, he was awesome. All right, so take me through last night, because I think you said you weren't expecting to get drafted in the third, maybe the mm -hmm. fourth, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. so, so where were you, and how did it come to be? Yeah, so I mean, I'd heard from... My agent said a lot of teams had like fourth round grades on me. And he said, that's good though, because if most of them had fourth round grades, the team that really wants to might have taken the third. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, so that's exciting. Um, so we were watching the draft all day yesterday and literally like five picks before, <laughs> before I got the call, everybody was like, hey, we're hungry. Like, like what are we gonna eat? I was like, we don't have to sit here and just watch this all night. Let's go eat, like it's fine. I'll just keep my phone on, whatever. And, <laughs> and literally like we pulled out of the driveway of the house and like, was on down right down the street. Of course, phone rang. So I, we were in two separate cars. My parents and my fiance's parents were in the car in front of me, and then me and my fiance and a couple of my friends were in the car that I was in. And literally, the phone rang, and I was like, "Were you driving?" No, no, I was in the passenger seat. I was like, "Is it? Is this the car?" I was like, "Pull over! Pull over! Pull over! Pull over!" <laughs> so we pulled over, and I answered, and yeah, it was just it was. What, what was what was the, what was the car ride like after that? Um, it was it was nuts. Like, cause so I got the call and it was still like there was still probably I don't know five ten minutes before it actually like showed up on like the on the TV. So like they pulled it up on their phones and like recorded it and like all types of different stuff. It was it was nuts. Everybody was <laughs> was really excited. It was fun. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so coming from a small school, 
your coach also said you did you did a great job of just deflecting the attention because a lot of attention obviously yeah. <laughs> comes with you know being at a small school mm-hmm. and you being a, the prospect that you were. Absolutely. What was that like uh, being the guy that that was going to be maybe that next NFL yeah. prospect? Um, I I don't really like to be the center of attention, so I. I I'm quick to deflect to deflect attention away from me, and that's just that's kind of how I handled it all. Like, um, people say I'm like really humble, but I just really just I just really don't like to be the center of attention. And so, whenever there was stuff bring, like brought up and questions asked about me, it was just it was really easy for me to just talk about other people, like yeah, because I just don't like talking about myself. So, uh, yeah, I mean. That's kind of how I how I handled it all. I tried to talk about other people more than I was talking about myself. So there you go. The, the combine, uh, what was that experience like for you? And just I, I was talking to Nas about the draft process. Yeah, uh, it had to have been new for you, Absolutely. different different Absolutely. from just playing ball, right? Yeah. There's uh-huh. there's interviews, there's pro days, there's uh, combine, yep. there's visits, all that mm-hmm. stuff. Um, it's it's nuts. Honestly, it's, it's a crazy process. There's so much that goes into it, and you're tra- you're trying to train and like stay healthy and still eat right but you're going on, on planes and hotel rooms and all these different places but for me honestly it was just a crazy it was like an unbelievable opportunity that I was so thankful and lucky to have to uh show my abilities on a greater scale because I mean I'd heard the whole time about questions if I was could compete with top level talent so like I was like really eager to get the shrine game and get to the combine and like show that I could compete with those guys um so yeah I was I was so excited about it it didn't really matter like what else was going on or how crazy the situation was I was just excited to be there so coach Anderson said you guys had like a checklist of things that you needed to do or improve on just to get to the NFL level just getting more physical Mm -hmm. and stronger and things like that and it sounds like you guys were checking things off to get to the third round absolutely no we we were checking things off and I mean I still have a still have a little mental list my own of things I need to check off but uh but yeah no he they that coaching staff helped me an unbelievable amount gets to where I'm at. Well, what do you want to check off? The things you want um, to share? So my, my upper body strength is something I still need to continue to work on. Um, I work on it every day. Um, so that's a big one. And then I just need to soak in, like, all of the knowledge and things from from guys on the team, from coaches who have been around this league just because I'm, I'm new to it. I'm excited to, like, get as much – just be a sponge and get as much knowledge as I can from those guys. Like, those are the two big things. Well, and, and that's the thing, too. Like, <clears throat> it, it's so important. It, of course – is you want to be drafted, yeah. <laughs> but you want to be drafted to the right team, exactly. the right place, the right culture. Yeah. You got Pat Myers, your offensive line oh, yeah. coach. You got Russell Okung, a Super mm-hmm. Bowl champion, a Pro Bowler to learn from. Yep. You got Mike Pouncey, yep. an All Pro <laughs> as center, and even situation. guys like Forrest Lamb and Dan Feeney, guys who have been in the year in the league for like a year or two. Mm-hmm. Those guys could be great resources Absolutely. just because they're, they're straight out of the yeah, league or exactly. straight out of the college as well. Yeah, they're just they're just getting in the league and they've been in my shoes a year or two ago. So I mean, they're they're great resources as well and. Um, I'm just I'm really excited to get in there with those guys and outside the offensive line, the, the skill position players, and then to protect a, a Hall of Fame quarterback and Philip Rivers. How <laughs> yeah. does that sound? Uh, unbelievable! Like that's just a dream. Like that's a dream for any offensive lineman to get to protect somebody like that. And uh, I'm excited. I'm so I'm so excited to get into playing football and just being with those guys. It's great. Los Angeles. What do you know about LA? Um, not a whole lot, honestly. I've been here twice. I went. I was on like the Rams visit a couple weeks ago. I came here and then uh, vacation in like middle school. Sometime I don't really remember very much about it. But I mean, what I know about LA, it's hot. It's beautiful weather. Um, the beach close by. I don't yeah, know. it's a lot. I don't, yeah, it's a, there's a lot of stuff going. Traffic is bad. I hear it could be. Traffic it depends. It depends on where yeah. you where you you lay your roots here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, you'll be all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> Final thing for you. What do you want Chargers yeah. fans to know about you and just. 2019 in general uh, like I said tonight this is a team that's on the rise right now um, they've won more games each and every year under Anthony Lynn and big things are expected in 2019 mm-hmm. uh, I mean you just have to know I mean the smile is a uh, don't get fooled by the smile I smile a lot and laugh a lot off the field um, but on the field like I'm here to compete and I'm, I'll do whatever to help the team win so I'm uh, I'm really excited to be here we're pumped to have you man yeah. congratulations thank you, thank you very much And that's going to do it for a very special draft edition of the Backstage Chargers podcast presented by Toyota. A big thanks to Trey Pipkins, Nazir Adderley, and Jerry Tillery for joining me. And of course, thanks to you all for listening. Download and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, and be sure to rate and review Backstage Chargers on Apple Podcasts. I appreciate you guys listening, and until next time, I'm Chris Hayrie.